Hi you guys, welcome to my little paintbrush. My name is Miss Cami, and today I'm gonna to teach you how to paint the easiest daisies ever. You're gonna love this and you're gonna be painting daisies everywhere once you realize how fun and simple they are. So I hope you came ready to learn. Um, hopefully you have our paint kit, because if you do, you will have all the supplies that I'm using today. Your surface will be prepped and it'll just be super simple. If you don't have our paint kit, no worries. This is a pretty simple piece. It's also a simple prep piece, as you can see. Um, so you can freehand um, a quick sketch on a surface, or you can even get our pattern and put this in um, yourself. And then just grab some supplies and let's create together, okay? Um, <clears throat> I have three brushes that I'm gonna be working with today. Our paint kits come with these exact sizes. They're a little bit different. Um, they look a little different, but they're exact same size. We've got a number 12 flat, we've got a number six round, and a number two detail. Those are our favorite sizes. They're good for all ages. So that's what we're gonna to use today, all right? Um, make sure you have a jar or a cup or two of water. We like to have two on hand, so we always have clean water. Um, we also like to use jars versus like a plastic disposable cup. You want something that's a little bit more weighted so that when you wash your brush, it doesn't tip over so easily. Um, but anything that holds water, okay, will be awesome. Let's get started. I'm gonna grab my flat brush and get it wet in some water. <clears throat> swish it around our paint needs water our brush uh, needs those bristles to be loosened so water is important all right here's our um, colors for today really simple um I've separated my pile of my white into a few piles just so I don't contaminate them all at once and we're going to begin with our background I'm going to grab a scoop of this um, green move it over to white and I'm going to mix those two together. This is my background color of choice. Um, you can do a yellow background if you want. That would be pretty. You can even use this brown to do a background. You have those colors if you have our kit. Maybe you're doing something completely different at home. Just mix your paint until you've got the shade that you want. I will suggest always go slightly lighter um, than you think you'll want just because it does dry darker on your surface, okay? So I've got my paint all ready to go. Now I'm going to fill in my background. I'm gonna try and keep a vertical brush stroke, but don't forget these flowers are gonna be in full bloom. So if you see some um, strokes behind, left behind, just kind of embrace that. I find that people really struggle um, to embrace the brush strokes because we're used to these like um, computer generated images and so we want these perfect flat surfaces and it just doesn't always work that way when you're hand painting so just embrace that you can see I went straight through my jar you can also see that I completely forgot to prep half of my jar okay <laughs> you should have a full jar I'm missing a side but I'll just freehand that in, no problem. But you do wanna go through your jar because it's a clear jar, and so the background will be noticeable and uh, you'll be able to see it. I keep adding water to my paint as I go, that's important. I'm also painting right over the stems. These are dark enough and my background is light enough that they show, they show up, okay? Um, I am going to do my best, though, to go around my flower centers because those are going to be yellow. And unfortunately, yellow um, likes everyone else to show off. It shows everything. If you try and put yellow over a color, it's pretty difficult to get coverage. So even though you're trying to keep that um, vertical brush stroke, pausing and going around your flower centers, are, that's just fine. Don't even worry about it. We're just doing we're just doing our thing. If you're painting on a wrapped canvas, we always suggest you wrap your canvas. Um, that really finishes your work off. And if you don't plan on framing your artwork and you want to set this on um, an entry table or a shelf or you want to hang it on the wall, if you um, wrap those edges, then it's ready for display. 
and you don't have to worry about, oh, my, my edges don't look the same as my picture, and it kind of just looks like you started a project and didn't finish it. If you get any of your background color in your flower centers, don't panic, okay? It really will be okay. Just let it dry, let your background dry, and then put some white in your center again before you put um, the yellow. That way it gets that coverage, okay? Unless it's just a little bit like this, I'm not even gonna worry about that. Once your background is in, you can kind of go over it again if you want, fill in some spaces that maybe it was a little bit thinner. Um, I am surrounded by lights right now, and so my paint dries really, really fast. There's a lot of heat on my surface, okay? Um, most likely that's not the case for you. So I'm gonna be working pretty quickly because I want to get those blends and I want opportunity before my paint dries completely. And so if I'm going too fast for you, which is likely going to be the case, just pause this video. That's the great thing about technology and painting in the comfort of your own home or wherever you're at. You can just pause whenever you want. Okay. But get that background in until you're happy and satisfied with it. And then we're gonna wash our brush. Make sure when you're washing, um, you're really putting that brush down in to the water, not just up on the surface. Get it in there and all the way to the base of your jar or your cup so that you can really scrub those bristles, okay? All right. Now I'm gonna pop over to my detail brush. This is our smallest brush. Anytime you hear someone say time for details, you know you're gonna go into a smaller brush. I'm gonna get it wet, and I'm gonna go into my white paint. We're gonna start working on our jar, so really make sure your background is dry. Couple ways to do this if you're kind of in a hurry or you just don't wanna wait. You can fan it with a, like a plate, just fan it. Um, you can also get a blow dryer, just keep it on low and don't use the heat component of the blow dryer. Um, that will sometimes change the color, the vibrance of your paint, and not to mention the fire hazard, right? So um, those are a couple ways to dry it quickly. However, acrylic paint naturally dries pretty quick. So you may find that by the time you get a drink and a snack, your background is dry. All right, so we are just gonna take our brush now and outline our jar. We're gonna go right through our petals, not our petals, our stems, sorry. Um, and we will place those um, in the jar as needed when we are ready to do that. So right now, instead of like pausing and going around the stems for those that are in, in the back of the rim, we're just gonna go try and get the best circle that we can. And that's easier to do if you just keep your brush stroke in place. Okay. Um, depending on how much water is in your paint and how, th you know, the thickness of your paint, you might have to do a couple layers of this. Maybe you want your jar, your rim to be super, super bright. That would take more layers. Right now, just get that first one in as best you can. And I like to try and keep it the same <laughs> width around, but that's tricky to do. So again, hand painted. We gotta remember that. We gotta tell ourselves that over and over again. All right, then we're gonna come and do the sides of our cute jar. Just follow those pencil lines. You should still be able to see them. If you lost them completely, or maybe you want to lose them because you wanted a different vase shape, just that's totally cool. In fact, when I've taught this before, it was freehand, which is what I'm gonna have to do on this other, <laughs> this other side of my jar or my vase because I didn't trace it in. 
But um, when I've taught this in the past, it's been a freehand piece, which has actually been a lot of fun because everybody kind of ended up with a different, a different style of vase, so. You can totally do that too. All right. That's the main outline of our, our vase. So I'm gonna wash my detail brush. Again, I'm gonna come back to it. It's not finished, but that's kind of our first, our first step before we do our stems. So now I'm gonna do the center of our flowers. For me, that's gonna be a yellow, and I really wanna utilize my white with this yellow. Um, it's a bright, beautiful yellow, but we really just wanna add some of that white so we, could, could, we get good coverage. Some people don't realize this, but our white paint is our strongest paint. It has the most pigment. And so that's why we use it so much for coverage. You would have to layer and layer and layer without it. And so that's one reason why we use it so much. Okay, now I'm just, I switched back to my flat brush to put these in. And if you're having a hard time covering the pencil mark, because again, um, yellow likes to show every color off before it shows off itself, um, you can erase the the pencil before you start this step or you can just paint these white first before you do the yellow and that will really help eliminate that line but we're actually going to come in with another layer to the center of our flowers so I'm going to leave mine because maybe that second layer will touch it up I also put in my pencil marks a lot darker then you might have on your canvas just so that the camera picks it up. So you might not even see yours. All right, I'm gonna wash my brush now. Swish, swish. You can hear me really getting in there because that's important. Get those bristles clean. I'm gonna jump back to my detail brush to paint my stems in. Now, we obviously don't want the same shade of green for our stems to be like the background. We want them to stand out. You can just use this green exactly how it is um, and that'll work just fine. But again, coverage. I wanna add some white, okay? Don't want it to be as light as my background, but I do wanna utilize that white. Now you can do one of two things here. You can say, I wanna pull lime. I wanna go into the warm tones. You can add some yellow. And this will immediately take that green into a more limey shade, a limey tone. Now, once you do that, if you're like, now I wanna go deep, then you come over to your brown, okay? So you can really mess with it any way you want until you get that shade that you're like, mm-hmm, that's the one. Then loosen it with some water because, again, that's gonna help us with a good flow um, and a good offload from our brush to canvas or paper or wood. Water is just helpful. Okay, now we're gonna do our stems and we're gonna go straight through our jar. Even the foreground rim, again, instead of trying to pause and go around it, we're just gonna go straight through it, okay? You can connect it to the center of your flower if you want to. I like to kind of come slightly um, beneath it just because of my petals, but it doesn't really matter. All right, let's do this other one. Again, you should be able to see these lines fairly good. If you cannot, you can do this. You can freehand this, I believe in you. If you notice, my stem gets thicker towards the base. That's because I start to press harder because naturally those stems would. And then my last one here kind of collides with my middle flower. And I did that on purpose. I didn't want them to be three distinct. You know, you want to kind of think what, what would naturally happen if I just threw these 
flowers into a jar. They would naturally kind of fall onto each other and stuff. So that was, that was the point in that. All right, washing that out. We're flying, guys. We're flying because, like I said, this is simple. It's a simple statement piece. It's like, it's beautiful, but just doesn't take much to really pop. Okay, now I'm going to show you how to do these petals. You're going to be amazed at how easy this is. Grab your round brush. I have my number six round, okay? What I'm going to do for just a second is make sure my white paint is nice and loose. So I'm just going to mix in some water. Again, I'm surrounded by lights, so my paint is drying, even on my palette, really quickly. So I'm having to use quite a bit of water. Maybe you don't have to use as much, but if you ever feel like your um, paint isn't flowing well from your brush to your canvas, really check in on that water, okay? Check on the, on the paint consistency. So I'm gonna spin my brush as I collect the paint so all my bristles come together. And I'm gonna start with this flower over here, and we're gonna start with the very top petal and the very bottom petal. And remember the flowers are kind of leaning forward, so those bottom petals will be smaller. Okay, so I'm gonna start at the beginning of my petal, the very top, I'm gonna press my brush, and as I come towards the center of my flower, I'm gonna pull that stroke away. So see, it's a press and pull. Now, that's more difficult to do coming this way right? So you can switch that up. You can do a pull and press, which you just barely touch your canvas and then you press your brush like that. Okay. So two different ways you can come away from the center of your flower or you can come um, into the center of your flower. Okay. I got a little green on that because my stem was slightly wet right there, but we do two layers on these petals. So it don't matter. Okay, let's keep going. Now I'm going to do one on either side and these are going to be slightly curved. Okay, so I'm going to curve these slightly out. Now it's really good and helpful to start your flower out like this. It looks super funky, but now you have that placement and you're not going to have the problem of being like, wait, where am I supposed to be here? Okay. Now you just build on that, and as your petals come around, they're gonna start to curve just slightly. See what's happening? As my petals come around, they're curving and they're getting smaller, okay? Now, I've painted this a lot with a lot of people. As they come this way, they're going to continue to curve and get smaller and then they're gonna then they're gonna actually straighten up. So by the time we get right here, we're kind of a little bit more in the straight petal. Sometimes your brush does funky things and you gotta go back and like, hey, come back. So you can just curve those out like that. All right. Now we're gonna do this side. Again, you can come away. It really also depends on where you're sitting. Um, feel free to move your canvas, okay? I can't do that because I've got all this equipment around me. And so I kind of have to stay put, which can be really frustrating because if I were at home, I would be spinning and turning this all different directions. Um, so you can do that, but that press and pull method or pull and press, whichever direction you're going, um, that'll change depending on where you're standing and where your canvas is. So now that we have our simple petal stroke down, you can just buzz through this painting. And like I said, you're gonna feel like a very experienced artist as you do these flowers because you're gonna realize, you know what? I can paint flower petals. I didn't think I could do that and you can. You most certainly can. 
Now I am not making contact with the center of my flower. You can see I'm, I'm stopping my stroke before it gets to the center which you can do or you can pull it all the way in if that's bothering you. Because like I said, we're gonna do another layer on the center of our flower. So if you feel like that's driving me crazy, I want it to finish, I want it to come full circle into um, my flower, then you can do that. And then when we do our second layer, we'll, we'll close it up. But I kind of like the idea of them just barely, barely outside of it. Now you're going to get some funky petals. I mean, I just, I hate to break it to you, but that's going to happen. Um, I love nature for that reason, because guys, I can't tell you how many times I've been in nature and I've seen something that's just hideous. When I was in, um, Hawaii recently. The pine trees on the island of Kauai are, to me, just the ugliest pine trees I've ever seen. And as they're, when they're mixed with all the other things, the palm trees and all the other shrubs and stuff, it's beautiful. But standing alone, I'm just thinking, these are awful. Like, these are really ugly. And my daughter and I were laughing about it because you know, when we paint, we're like, well, that is, that's an ugly petal. That's an ugly little twig or tree. And the truth of the matter is like in nature, nothing is perfect. And that's what makes it so fun to create. All right. I might be going crazy fast for you. This is muscle memory for me and you'll get there. Okay. You'll get to the point where you're like, look at me go with my petals. If you're struggling though, um, pause the video. You can also grab like a piece of paper and just practice this motion because it's all about pressure. Um, and you can just practice it until you feel really a little bit more confident and then you can come back to it. Now you can see some of our flowers, my petals are bigger on the bottom, some it's smaller, some are closer together, some are further apart. Guys, just love what's happening, okay? Just love what's happening because it's so natural and beautiful just the way that it's coming onto your canvas. I'm gonna do a second layer so that white really pops because sometimes, especially when we thin our paint, um, the background kind of takes over. So when you do this second layer, this is your chance to maybe make things a little bit bigger or round things off a little bit more. Um, whatever little touches you wanna fix, this is your chance to do it. Or you're like, hey, that petal's supposed to be taller or that one's supposed to be a little bit wider. This is, this is when you can do that but I will encourage you not to change too much because that initial brush stroke really was the most natural direction. And I almost hate to come back and do another layer because I like how natural the first one looks. But there's our second layer on, on this particular flower. You can see that the ending of the petals, some of them are a little rough um, if that starts to bother you quite a bit and you're like, I cannot live with this petal, um, get your detail brush once it's all dry and just go through and round the petals because we can't really help sometimes our brush will have a, a hair or a bristle that's like getting all crazy and it starts to go rogue on us and so then we might have to reshape them so if you feel the need to do that totally use your detail brush because you might be like I am pressing at the end of my stroke and I'm still getting a weird ending that's why also try turning your brush around because sometimes it's like one side of our brush versus the other and we'll flip it around and the other side is like this really smooth brush stroke. So you can try that too. 
Some of your petals might touch, maybe you want them to. When I, I taught this for a bridal shower, which was like, it was like the perfect bridal shower painting. And when I taught the bridal shower, I had somebody paint these super full. Like they had tons of petals and it was beautiful. I was a little bit jealous. I was like, wow, you freaking killed those petals. And the flowers were just nice and full and all the petals touched, which is totally fine. So if you want a more um, full look, have those petals touch. I'll tell you why I created it the way that I did. Um, when I teach beginner artists, it's hard to avoid the blob, <laughs> okay? And when we're painting all one tone without any value, like we're not gonna add any value to these petals. They're, they're literally just gonna stay white. We're not adding shadow or highlight to them, the petals. Um, they become kind of blobs. So the reason I created it this way is so that the beginner artist can get the idea of a petal without getting the blob. And sometimes that's tricky to do. And so I kept these petals separated as much as possible. But again, if you're feeling confident that you can still walk away with um, a daisy, then have those petals meet and touch and make it this full, beautiful flower. It's, it's all you, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and stop at two layers because it works for me. If you wanna continue layering, you could do as many layers as you want. Um, just pause this and continue to do that. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next step, which I'm gonna grab my uh, flat brush for, and I'm gonna do the second layer in my petals. I'm gonna mix some more white and yellow because I don't have any more that's, it's already dried up from my lights. I'm gonna go into my flower and I'm gonna do a second layer in the center of my flower. Again, if you wanna cover up those pencil marks, you can get really close to them. You can add some white to your yellow, more white than you already did. Um, the white is really what's gonna cover them. I'm not too worried about it. This is. Just a class, so I'm just gonna give you the tips. Now I'm gonna take my brush and dip the corner of it in my brown paint. because so I'm gonna shadow. So see how I dip the corner, pull it through, and then you start getting that faded look. And I'm just gonna basically put a smiley face on the base of each center of my flower. So very simply come around the center of my flower with that brown facing down. I'm not going around the whole thing. This is just my shadow. I'm just gonna come around. And you'll notice each of your flowers will have a different um, strength of a shadow based on the paint, how loaded it is, how, how it's offloading, all those things matter. Um, so you, they don't need to be identical. You don't need to be like, this one's darker than this one. It's fine. That's what makes it so fun. Last one. Oh, I'm glad I just went over that before I did this one, because look how thick this one is. All the way around, just that little smiley face. This is called floating because you're floating two colors into each other. Right now we're floating the brown into the yellow, right? Um, so you could just outline, just say, I'm just gonna put a thin line of brown at the bottom of this and call it good. And you could do that, that's totally fine. But the floating kind of get, takes away that harshness of it and it has that blending effect. Gorgeous, okay. Back to our detail brush and our white paint. We get to do a few fun things. The first thing we're gonna do 
is we're gonna close off the jar because right now our flowers are on the outside of our jar, okay? So we want the stems to go down and through the back of the rim of the jar, but the front of the rim should be closed off, right? Now our flowers are in the jar. Now because this is white and because our stems are green, we might have to go over this a couple of times or really thick right there to say, oh, okay, those are in the jar. But again, it's a glass jar, it's clear. So the stems showing just a little bit right there would be a natural way for things to happen. We're gonna add a few uh, reflections onto our jar as well, okay, to indicate light. A Couple of them are gonna happen right here with our detail brush. So I'm gonna come to this little corner, press, it's another press and pull, press and pull through. The other one's gonna happen over here, but it's just not gonna go as far. It's just gonna stop sooner, okay? So we're gonna let those two marks happen. That sort of indicates that there's another um, indention. Before we switch our brushes, if the center of your flower is dry, you can go ahead and add a really cute highlight on the top of it. So you've got your low lights, you've got your shade shadow, shade shadow, you know, whatever you want to call it. It's a shaded shadow. Um, and then you've got your highlight, okay? So you did your frowny face or your smiley face as the um, shadow, and you can kind of view this as the frowny face is your highlight. I like to shape everything because I teach more kids than I do adults and so I'm always like make a smiley face, make a frowny face, make a rainbow. However it like computes in your brain is, is what we want. Before I switch my brushes or my brush, I'm gonna go ahead and do one more layer right there. I'm not kidding you, this is like pew, 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 dry, dry, dry. All right, so I'm just gonna show you real quick in the event that you're like, my petals need some help. You can come with your detail brush and look, I'm just gonna kind of put, again, a smiley face on the bottom of these petals facing downwards. And you can just round them out. Now, I'm not gonna do that with all my petals, but you might want to, and I will say that I've done it before, and it's fine. You're the person that's looking at your painting. You're the one that's viewing your art, so, you want to make improvements so that you enjoy it more, then do that, okay? Wash that brush. I'm gonna get my flat and do a little bit of dry brushing in the jar before I sign my name. Can you believe this? Can you believe this painting, how fast it is? It's insane. I love it. I love a good fast but gorgeous piece. All right, got my flat. It's pretty much dry but not completely. I'm gonna load it with just a little bit of white, not a ton. I'm gonna put these um, marks in my jar that indicate there's light coming in and reflecting. So I want you to start at sort of the beginning of the side of your, the left side of your jar, press and then sweep it out. Okay, press and then sweep it out. And because your brush is uh, more dry than wet, your brush stroke is gonna break and that's what you want. And you can come right through your stems and you're just gonna follow the shape of this jar, okay? And just pull it out. You want every stroke to end at a different spot. So you can pull some of them out further, keep some of them nice and tight and close. Then you're just gonna do some little ones over here because we don't wanna do the exact same thing on each side of our jar. Looking at my reference over here to see where we're at. So awesome. Up here in this little section, we're gonna do a sweeping one where we just kinda like, whoop, come through with that. And then between our stems, we're actually gonna go down. Notice these are just light. It's not like I want these to really show up. It's just like little kisses of light. And light is important. I tell people all the time, light wakes up your painting. It brings it to life. So 
the kids hate it and they always say, Miss Cammie, do I have to highlight? And I always say, no, honey, it's your painting. But yes, you should highlight, you know, because you do you. Guys, I'm ready to sign my name. Can you even? It is time. You can sign it in any color that you want. This is a really light piece. And so I'm going to play off of that and sign my name in white. Okay, so it's not going to be super noticeable, but I still am leaving my mark, which is what you want to do. Because guys, be proud of what you do. Okay, this is vulnerability. This is putting yourself out there. This is uncomfortable. So if you do it, even if it's not your favorite piece, even if this isn't something that you're going to show off to every friend that comes over, it's still something that you did and you should take pride in that. So put your mark on it and sign it. Okay. Awesome. Thank you for joining me. Um, I would love to see your pots of daisies, your jars of daisies, your vases of daisies, whatever happened on your canvas, I want to see it. So tag us on social media. It's hashtag my little paintbrush. You can even send us your photos when you do. We share them with everybody, or maybe that's a heck of a no to you. So you can just say no. Here's my picture, but please don't share it. We would just love to see how it turned out for you. If you enjoyed this video, give me a thumbs up. Go check out all of our other videos. We have tons. Um, and come join us again soon. We would love to paint with you some more. We'll see ya.